Okay, I've got a question. What do an interfering sister, Mega Juice, and Travel Woes Galore have in common? Well, somehow, believe it or not, they are all key plot points in Hallmark Channel's 2024 Christmas movie, Jingle Bell Run. And we've got a lot to talk about, Josh. We do, Jennifer, and we will unwrap it all on this episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Sit down and watch, then have a talk with Jennifer and Josh. Okay, so let's get this out of the way from the onset. You know, we did not officially draft this movie, but we couldn't not talk about this one. So we are bringing you a special bonus episode. Not a typical episode, Jennifer. We're just going to give some highs, lows, and gold and coal to basically give you our bottom line hot takes. We had to do it. This is my dream. So I was going to watch it regardless. My husband even said, ooh, can I watch it with you? Because he likes them too. So we watched it together, had a little date night. It was a fun time. So let's get to it. Here is the synopsis. Two opposites team up for an amazing Christmas race and find love along the way. So, Josh, tell me, what do you think about this movie? Well, I got to say, I really liked the characters here. You've got Ashley, who plays sort of this, this teacher who is desperate for adventure, kind of has a a life that's sort of very easy, very predictable, that sort of thing. And then you've got Andrew, who plays a hockey player who won the Stanley Cup. So they couldn't be from from any different worlds. And I liked that they were sort of thrown together in circumstance and had to really work through some things. What were your gut reactions when you started watching this? I mean, listen, I love reality TV. I watch Big Brother, Survivor, all these. This is like the Amazing Race Christmas style. So her sister signed her up. Like you said, it put us out of her comfort zone, and they're thrown together. I like the Andrew Walker. He's usually like the sympathetic, sweet, like uh, really toned down guy, and he was not that. He was an alpha male in this movie. He was a bro. It definitely had conflict with her, but I love their interactions, love their chemistry, and the banter. This movie was funny. I mean, I, I laughed out loud multiple times. There were multiple parts I rewound. Um, so I really enjoyed it. It made me laugh. Let me see some of my favorite points. I took some notes. Um, it starts with an animated intro package. And I went, okay, budge. But yeah. You don't always get that. It wasn't just B-roll of the city. It was like a little... And throughout, there were these little transitions where they kind of showed the planes, trains, and automobiles, taking them around the map of the U.S. I thought that was fun because they had to go across the world, or at least the United States, to do these different challenges. Um, I liked, or I thought it was funny that in the beginning in the school, the halls of her school are fully decorated for Christmas. Multiple, like three Christmas trees, garland on top of the lockers. It was beautiful, but also completely unrealistic because I don't know about you, but my school, if there had been fully decorated Christmas trees, somebody would have been using them to fight with. So it would not have gone well. (laughs) This is an elementary school, so maybe that makes it okay and less lethal. I don't know, but... That made me laugh. Um, Andrew Walker is trying to get this promotion with Mega Juice in the beginning. And so he's filming his little intro or whatever, his commercial for it. And there's this other guy on the race that is also like a sports guy, right? And he kind of like wins out. And one part later, Andrew Walker's asleep in the car. And then he gets startled. He wakes up. He's like, oh, Mega Juice. <laughs> like, uh, Andy and I laughed. My husband and I laughed at that. We watched it four times. I just kept rewinding when she wakes him up in the car. <laughs> So uh, what other points stuck out to you? So I really liked a lot of the traditions that they had. You know, they were doing all kinds of Christmas things, and they could have made this really easy breezy and just done the typical things. Wrap this present, do this thing, all of that sort of traditional Christmas stuff. But what you really wind up getting are these sort of nook and cranny Christmas traditions from all across the country, which I thought was really interesting. It put them in a lot of different settings. And, of course, they have hiccups and travel woes and the whole nine yards. And they're surrounded with, by what I thought was a really interesting cast around them. You know, sometimes the B characters in these can just be really bleh. But I really liked the layers that we got in the B characters here. So I thought this was a really fun watch from start to finish. Really, it kept my attention. I didn't fall asleep. Didn't really hit the cry count at all on this for me. But, you know, I still I still think that this was not that kind of movie. They weren't trying to really pull at your heartstrings. This was supposed to be really light, fun, easy, breezy, 
holiday fair. Yes. And they, you know, they start to fall in love with each other. But then the producer is like, hey, Andrew Walker's character, whatever his name was, Wes, maybe. Um, why don't you really play up this relationship with Avery? And he tries to like put it in his head. You'll get famous. So you'll be a big deal if you have this plot point. And then Avery overhears and she's like, oh, no, does he only like me to be on TV as a bit? So that's our oopsie doodle. Luckily, it's resolved fairly quickly. Um, but you get, yeah, there's a scene where they're decorating window displays and they drew a thing out of a hat and their theme was three French hens. <laughs> I should put up the picture. They had, I don't know where they got this stuff, right? But it's like giant stuffed pins that they put in berets and they're painting. So it's three French hens, there's baguettes. That made me laugh and gave me Christmas warm fuzzies. I thought it was super cute. I like, they go to Texas and they have some awkward line dance thing going on there. There's a new Brett Eldridge Christmas song that plays during that montage. Oh, I didn't even catch That's that. That's when they start to fall in love. Yeah, I'd heard it on Spotify because Spotify was like, hey, you might like the song. And I did. And then I heard it on the movie. So we'll put that on our post for this too. But it just, it all worked for me. I liked it all. The only part that I thought was a little weird was the brother, his brother storyline. Like he was kind of estranged from his family a little bit. And the brother shows up at the end. I guess that was sweet. But if you blinked, you would have missed it. Like, yeah. he just kind of randomly shows up at the end. So that was not like, fully fleshed out. And then I wrote down a quote, and I don't know if you caught it, but I watched it twice. And so when Andrew Walker's character is declaring to Ashley Williams, you know, I, I'm, I'm in this. This is not, I, I really am following for you. He says, quote, I would forget about it all if it meant losing you. Hmm. Is that really what you meant to say? <laughs> It can't be. And I was like, maybe no. I misheard. And I turned the captions on. And I would forget about it all if it meant losing you. It just, that doesn't make sense, right? Isn't that yeah. something's backwards? I don't know. Yeah. The sentiment, the sentiment is there. Maybe the syntax yeah. of the sentiment is not. So, but I mean. Bless his heart. I also, I liked that uh, Avery is a cruciverbalist. I'd never heard that term before, had you? Same. No. She's great at crossword puzzles. Well, you know, there's a crossword puzzle at the end that the final clue, what was it? Like, it was another a synonym for the star of Bethlehem. Yeah. And it's three letters, and the middle letter is R, and they figure out, oh, but it's the back where it's like the reverse. It's in the right? mirror. Yeah. Yes, it was the whole thing about look in the mirror. Yeah. So it was an orb, but reversed, it was bro. What? Yeah. That was so much of a stretch. Stretch Armstrong couldn't even reach it. Like, no. What is happening? No. <laughs> I was very confused by that bit. But overall, this was a hoot and a half. Is it my favorite movie? Yes, it's my new favorite movie of the oh. year. I loved it. I did. I mean, mm -hmm. but it's not really fair because I loved it going in. Like, they could have just sat on a rock and stared at each other for an hour and 23 minutes or whatever, and I would have been like, yes, please, more of this. So... I'm grading on a curve, or I'm biased, maybe, um, but it was my favorite. Where does it fall in the rankings for you? High, middle, bottom? It's going to be middle to high for me, and I've got some things to unpack with you in our Gold or Coal segment, so let's get to that. Let's do it. It's time for Gold or Coal. Okay, it is time for our Gold or Coal segment, where we're each going to bring three gifts to the podcast. If you're new here... If there's more gold, it's an amazing race. If there's more coal, it's we missed our flight. So we're going to bring three gifts, what we liked, what we didn't. We'll see what the winning tally is. Josh, going to you first. Yeah, so for me, I will give gold. I think the variety of scenery that you get in this movie is really fun. They really take you all across the country, show you some amazing things, introduce you to some traditions that I didn't really realize were Christmas traditions in certain cultures and corners of the country which the i thought pinatas and yeah, pinatas. yeah exactly and i think that that was really special really and introduced you to some things that you didn't really think were festive and holiday celebrations but i really like that aspect so gold for me out of the gate and since this is now your favorite of the season i can i can only guess what your your gift tally is going to be i guess i shouldn't have said that already but yeah, here yeah, we are the mr right. scott I'm going to give gold for the banter. You know, I love banter. They had great banter. It was easy. It was lived in. 
And I did buy their chemistry. I, I mean, since they were spending so much time together, I could see, and you see it all the time on these reality shows, people do get into showmances, as they're called, and they fall in love with each other after being locked in a house with each other, or going on these races, or starving themselves on Survivor, whatever it is. So I could buy that if you spend some time together one-on-one in these intense situations that you could fall for each other. I, I bought it. I liked it. Good for you. Gold for me, too. I just thought, I thought the concept of this movie, I agree with you, too, on the chemistry piece, by the way. Okay. Well, for me, it's good for you. It's like good for, for you. you. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm giving more gold because I really just like the concept of this movie, and it's so interesting. I don't know, listeners, if you're in any of these Hallmark Facebook groups like I am, but you really can see how some of these movies this season are so divisive. You've got this core group of people who've been with Hallmark for years and years and years and years really want every movie to be sort of these heartwarming Candace Cameron Bure, Danica McKellar, sweet and slow romance. Yes, yeah, yes yeah. exactly. And this is not that. And they are trying to do some different things this season. And some people love them and some people do not love them. But for me, I think the concept really works. When I'm coming to a movie like this, I want it to be fun. I don't want it to be too serious. I don't want it to be too smarmy or too saccharine. And I just thought from start to finish, this was really a fun concept. Yeah, there's a time and a place for that. And overall, I mean, I haven't seen all the movies yet this season as recording, but I've seen a lot of them, even if we haven't talked about them on the podcast. And there was one that came out on Hallmark Mystery last week, A Reason for the Season. And it had that sweet, heartfelt, heartwarming vibe. So I think... There is something for everybody, but not every movie is going to hit with everybody like it used to. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you have 40 plus movies in a season, you're not going to like them all. You just can't. So I agree. It's very divisive. And it is a lot of a generational divide or like a old home. It's like old money versus new money. Old Hallmark versus new, versus Hallmark. new Hallmark. Yeah, exactly. Uh, my next gift of gold will be it was fast paced coming at you. I mean, this movie did not slow down. Really, until they're in Texas and they danced and they had like the sensual dip. He dipped her and then they were talking about the fire pit outside, really connecting about their past. And then it wasn't even slow. It was just that was when it kind of slowed down. It moved and grooved. And my, one of my biggest complaints is these movies drag sometimes. And I could have watched another whole movie of this. Re- give me more. Yeah. Space. That's it. Yeah. I am going to give some coal. No. Sorry. I rebuke it. This is supposed to be a reality show. That's the whole premise here. There is nary a camera capturing these moments that would absolutely be there were this to have been a real reality show. For example, they miss they miss a flight. Where's the camera? Where's the camera that captures them doing the thumb on a ride on the side of the road? That absolutely. Where's the camera when they were you know, having that fire pit conversation, you know, we didn't get a, you know, it was the whole thing, you know, and, and, and I wanted more of that sort of element of them. I would have loved to see them kind of like having to sneak away to try to escape the cameras, to have some of these conversations and bond a little bit more. It was just a little too convenient when they wanted you to, to remind you that this was a reality show. And then it disappeared when they wanted you to remember that this is a Hallmark movie. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. There was that scene, I think it was in Texas as well, where they almost kissed, but then Andrew Walker looked behind. He's like, there's a camera, so we need to not do that. Yeah. So there, they did do it a little bit, but yeah, you're right. The biggest thing, when they missed the flight, there should have been a camera crew with them, with each pair along the way nonstop, when yeah. doing all this travel business, and there wasn't. So I agree. I don't think it's coal-worthy, but it's a note. A note to note. <laughs> Just a note. Um, last piece of gold it was fun times <laughs> basically all my golds are the same thing and I don't even care I'm unapologetic because I got some hate saying I was being too hateful about the movies this season oh Anywho. well not this time okay loved it loved it <laughs> loved it loved it loved it some more already recommending it to people again I think this is an easy on ramp if this is if the hallmark trope is not your jam watch this movie because this appeals to everybody. It's kind of like Haul Out the Holly in that it's fun times. You can put it on the background and you'll get your Christmas vibes. in. So. Yeah, I agree 100%. Bottom line, five to one. We're going to call it an amazing race. And Jennifer, I think 
what you and your husband Andy did is perfect. This is a great date night movie. This is a great couple figuring each other out and falling in love as they're doing something incredible together. I just think that this would be a great snuggle up with your significant other, maybe a glass of wine or two, and enjoy and enjoy this one together. <laughs> I love that you're starting to appear at the movies with uh, scenes or like actual life this season. That's so well, funny. You know. <laughs> I'm just trying to make I'm just trying to make our reviews that much more able to be integrated into people's lives because I want people to enjoy these the way that we do. And I see nothing wrong with us from our position of expertise. Let's just call it what it right. is. Just offering sort of a here's how this could integrate into your life, right? We are Christmas movie content connoisseurs, if nothing else. Indeed. Indeed. Put that on a business card. And that, friends, is another fun episode of a fun movie on Do You Watch When I Watch. (laughs) Special thanks to our amazing friend Nick Schwartz for our theme song. And, of course, to all of you for taking the time to listen on your favorite podcast platform and watch us on our YouTube channel. That's right. Hey, if you're here, we're so glad you're here. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. You know what would be great? A five-star rating review on your podcast platform or smash that subscribe button on YouTube, wherever it is on the screen. Currently, if you're on YouTube and you follow us, hey, sometimes these episodes drop early on YouTube. So wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You get a little extra time with us. Isn't that the gift that keeps on giving? If you have any questions, you can always look at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com for how to connect with us. Next time, my goodness, we are going to Netflix. For a much anticipated Christmas movie called Hot Frosty, starring Lacey Chabert and Dustin Milligan. And here's the plot summary. When a young widow's magic scarf brings a dashing snowman to life, can he help her rediscover romance, laughter, and holiday cheer before he melts away? We are going to have much to discuss. I can guarantee it. But until then, may your days be merry and bright. We will see you next time. 